Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Earth Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. Now, it's the like button's birthday. He doesn't have that many candles on his cake. If you click the like button, he might get an extra candle on his cake and be very happy. Also, if you haven't yet, please subscribe if you haven't, and also drop a birthday cake emoji down below. Anyways, on to the story. The Moth Yard of the Humans, by Farm Witch 4275. Tension ran thick within the confines of our flagship as we crossed the hyperlane, the fleet staying in perfect condition, the rays of light flying past the window, streaks of dust screeching past us at light speeds, as our war fleet effortlessly sliced through the void of space. I carefully looked up from my gunnery console and allowed my eyes to wander around the ship. The three war leaders sat on the elevated console in the center. Admiral Barbati, a proud Torian with his hooves polished and gilded, Ambassador Sargon of the Okandi to the left, his eight legs perched calmly in front of him in a silent vigil. Master Imbuku in the right, High Warlord of the Ritani people, directing his legions of invasion troops. It was not unusual. We always explored the galaxy with vast numbers of warriors and warships. The war fleet wouldn't enter a system, scan it for anything useful, then leave to the next target. After a while, the system would receive science teams and research directors, who would do what they'd do. We met any newcomers in the galaxy with an iron fist and a raised shield. System entry momentarily, my lords, the navigation officer said, Excellent. Prepare healing frequencies and ready munitions. We won't have another instant like the Tal Fuhrer Three again, Admiral Barbati commanded, a smug grin crossing his face. Yes, my lord, the communications officer and myself said at the same time as we got to work. I rejected all my calculations, calling my gunnery teams to attention. The streaking lights outside the window began to slow themselves down to a crawl. Then suddenly, we materialized on the other side. Coalition alarms began to blare out in every ship as navigation officers and commanders frantically scrambled to stop their ships. What in the mother's tits? Barbaris said as he saw the state of the star system. The view of the system star was blotted out by the silhouettes of an unimaginably huge number of starships. Everything from single-person fighter craft to a mass of super dreadnoughts and planet-killing titans Millions of ships of every possible size, shape, and conceivable design floating within an empty moor of space. One large main-sequence star, one small habitable terrestrial planet, and one massive superstation dry dock, housing thousands of ships. Battle stations! Barbaris commanded. We readied our systems, directing turrets forward to a massive armada of warships and starships now arrayed in front of us. If we would fight, then we go with honor. We were vastly outclassed, vastly outnumbered, but we would fight to the last with honor. Within seconds, every ship's shields and cannons were maxed out, ready to fight. Something wasn't right. We sat at the ready, waiting for our fleet to be vaporized by the hail of unimaginable cannon fire. I sat at my console with my fingers on the button, ready to fire the very first volley. Something was off. We are the Imperium. It matters not what kinds of firepower you have. You will submit to the ethereal rule of the Grand Emperor. We are the sons of the Shivari, and we are immortal. Stand and fight. Marborous barked through the open communication channels, rousing us to full combat mode. Our shields were the best in the galaxy, the finest laser weapons of our empire, and the strongest armor plating of any race. We wouldn't go down without a flight. Something still wasn't right. We sat for a full minute, receiving nothing but silence. Deathly, empty silence. I took the initiative. My job, basically. Scanning Titan glass warship direct front for weaknesses, I idly said to my gunnery crew. A few tense moments followed. Derelict, I said. The readout said that the Titan was completely abandoned. Most of its components were missing. Even a basic scan of its superstructure was heavily compromised. It produced no energy signatures. Even the telltale background radiation caused by a reactor simply existing wasn't there. Um, scanning Titan glass to port side 20, I said again. 
The turrets on the ship immediately redirected towards the warship to the left in a concentrated, well-practiced dance of steel. Derelict, functional, but abandoned. No life signs, no power signatures, I said again. The readouts made no sense. This makes no sense. The Titan was in pristine, battle-ready condition. But there was nobody in it. Perform broad spectrum scan of local area. I was going to say we caught them off guard, but uh, they should have responded by now, Barbarous ordered. Yes, my lord, I said, and immediately got to work. I did his order and started getting readouts back. A few minutes later, I began listing out targets. Dreadnought class, derelict, no weapons. Super Dreadnought, derelict, no power signatures. Battleship class, empty shell with no interior. Possible cargo ship, empty. No reactor, no point defense. Broad scan of 70 craft, fighter class, derelict. No power source, not even fabric in the seats. I finished listing some of the more notable targets and looked at my commander with a raised brow. What is the star system? Perform a deep scan of the local terrestrial planet. What's going on here? Barbarous commanded as he stood up from his seat. Scanning. Deep scans produced no response from the local area. No machines, no drones, no robotic signatures. Nothing, she replied in turn. A few tense moments passed. At this point, I called all turrets to stand down and perform precision scans and start taking photographs of the area using the gun cameras relaying the same orders, but made the fleet maintain their formation. And getting millions of individual computer signals, small localized transmissions, all broadcasting the same message, running it through translation software. Hold, uh, she said. We all looked at her, waiting impatiently. She listened for a few more tense moments. Message reads, For the lost, for the fallen, rest in peace. I used my command console to reload one of the cannons, a ballistic shell filled with a visual scanner probe. A quick thump released it, and it flew through a massive number of empty ships, hurtling towards the planet. Barbarous gave me a quizzical look, but didn't stop me. Three, two, one, impact. Receiving vigils now, I said, and brought up the image on my console. The entire planet was arranged into a strange square grid pattern that was formed out of carved stone marble walls several units high. Inside each square plot, arrayed in perfect rows, were various small smooth stones, with writing carved into them, planted into the ground. A scan indicated underneath each stone was a decomposing body of a biological life form. A quick translation revealed that some of the stones had the name, origin, and species of the creature buried beneath it engraved on the stone. Most of the stones had no writing, or simply had the phrase, Rest in Peace, written on it. Each of the square plots were varied in size to one degree or another. Each one had a different style or composition. Some were just acres of acres of straight plain stones jutting out from the ground, while others had intricate carvings of statues and buildings covering them. Most of the planet was little more than light rolling hills and empty grasslands. Any occupied area was art of these strange burial grounds. I moved the probe around to look at the local area specifically one of the larger structures within the little stone grid. I directed the probe myself with the remote controls and took a look around. Massive wooden carved doors barred entry, and I almost lost my cool at the sight of glass in the stonework. The craftsmanship was nothing short of beautiful. Solid blocks of marble stone, intricately carved with chipped and precision tools. Even if all of this was done by machine, it was very clear. It was done slowly and with a lot of premeditation, care, and thought. The windows were basic glass coverings, but stained in various colors to create a mystical atmosphere reflecting strange and beautiful colors around the area and inside the building. I peeked through, finding solid marble blocks inside, each one holding the decomposing body of a life form. Well, I don't know who or what did this, but I like it. The craftsmanship is magnificent, I said arbitrarily, as I recalled the probe from the planet's surface. It's obviously a graveyard to gate to the ships here. It seems to be a scrapyard of some kind, but uh, who in the flaming feck in their right minds would scrap or salvage fully functional warships, titans, dreadnoughts, cargo ships? By all rights, they're fully working. Why strip them? Is the Empire responsible for this in hard times, or are they abandoning these because they have better weapons? So many questions, Barbarous asked, seemingly half-talking to himself. Well, we can find out. I just got a ping. Active life form on board the large station orbiting the planet, the comm officer said. 
This is my job, Barbarous. We can resolve this without violence. I will meet them. Maybe we can make sense of this nonsensical situation. Ambassador Sargon said, getting up of his seat. What? What of honor and glory for the Empire? He protested, stomping his hooves angrily. Oh, shut up, you stupid blowhard. Any race that builds these kinds of warships is one I refuse to tangle with. There is honor in combat, not in suicide. Ready my shuttle now. I need to know what is going on. Ambassador Sargon said calmly, berating Barbarus for his efforts. The Admiral admitted defeat and slumped into his chair with a grumble as Sargon headed towards the shuttle bay. With permission, I joined, grabbing my pulse rifle and heading for the shuttle myself. The trip was short but harrowing as our pilot had incredible difficulty weaving us through the tangled remains of the star system science scrapyard. We arrived at the docking arm of the station, massive in its own right and docked without incident. The atmosphere surrounding the station was strangely calming as we walked through the docking arm into the main hallway. And there it was. Bipedal, three units tall, two eyes, two arms, two legs, one head. Strangely cute-looking, pale-skinned creature. Mammalian in nature, I guessed. It was humming a tune to itself while using some kind of strange machine to polish the floor. Greetings there, Ambassador Sargon said loudly, snapping the creature out of its janitorial days. Giant fucking spider! The creature screamed, seemingly in terror, then began to retreat. It suddenly stopped in its tracks and looked again at the greeting party. Wait, spiders, giants, or otherwise, don't talk. Hello there. Ah, new neighbors, it said, and smiled as it headed towards us. It grabbed Ambassador Sargon's foot and shook it vigorously in what we presumed to be a greeting, then did the same to the others, grabbing one of their hands and shaking it with a bit too much force. Welcome to the moth yard, he said with a smile, then resumed polishing the floor. Um, thank you. May I speak with your leader? Ambassador Sargon said. That's me. I'm Martin. I'm also the chef, the salvager, the electrician, the janitor, and the mechanic. I also make the best space mushroom gumbo that you'll ever eat he said simply, and carried on with his polishing. Um, okay then. What is this place? Why are you alone here? This is a mothball salvage yard. Ships that have been outdated, outmoded, or too damaged to be of use get sent here to be disassembled. Of course, there are war-damaged ships too, hence the graveyard that's on the planet there. Then there's the occasional derelict that gets swept up into the quantum net that ends up here too. All disassembled, smelted into ingots, then sold or used to build new ships, he said, as he filled up a container on the strange device with a sweet-smelling wood polish. Oh, I see. Well, actually, I, I don't, but anyway. Why are you the only life form here? The ambassador asked again. Oh, right, I forgot about that. Yeah, about uh, 800 years ago, I guess. Eight, was it? Yes, yes, almost 800 years ago, they did this whole civilization ascension thing. At least most of us did. I found it very boring, you, you know. I mean, there's still plenty of universe here, so why start your own new one, uh, silly humans? In any case, I felt that we couldn't just leave our fleets empty around the universe, so I volunteered to stay here and clean us up all the trash. He stated simply and resumed cleaning the floor. Our response was all the same. Wait, what? We stood silent with our jaws on the floor, just staring blankly at this creature. That was just casually polishing the floor. It was 20 minutes before I suddenly decided to talk. I don't know my motivation, but it happened. So, uh, your species ascended to the Aether and transcended existence to create their own universe. Why did they leave you behind? I asked, breaking the awkward silence. They didn't leave me behind. I can go any time. I just felt that I was more to learn. Then I found this place and decided to set up shop here. Been here around 700 years. Uh, been stripping ships here since it's fun, uh, peaceful, meh. He shrugged his shoulders and carried on. I see, uh, can I ask you something? I said. He stopped his work and approached me. He got uncomfortably close and stared directly into my soul. You want one of those Titan class ships, don't you? I swallowed nervously and trembled a bit. Um, please? Uh, okay, he said, and put a set of access key cards in my hand. Wait, what? Now, well, you did say please. It's the big purple one by the cargo ships. That should be plenty for your needs. Not like I have any need for it. And besides, you did say please. He simply stated and started whistling a tune 
as he watered the various pot plants around the building. Ambassador Sargon and most of his retinue passed out and I really, really needed to sit down. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 peeps, Dragon Soup, Cold War Boomerwaffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Sans the Skeleton, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, and Lord Azricol. Thank you very much.